Big Fat Man Scoop, Brooklyn Clan. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. And right now, you're watching the Sensei, the number one, the king, my dude, Big Brando. He taught me, personally, me, Fat Man Scoop. All you gotta do is keep your mouth closed and your ears open. Listen to the man talk. That's knowledge personified right there. And I wouldn't trust nobody else but my dude, Big Brando. And I said it. Batman School, Big Brando, let's go! What's happening everybody? Boy Big Brando, and today let's talk about some of the accessories that you might want to pick up if you own a vinyl cutter and a heat press. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I've got a lot of questions on Instagram and TikTok from people that just recently picked up a heat press and a vinyl cutter or thinking about buying a heat press and a vinyl cutter. They have it in their cart and they hit me up and say, what else should I buy if I'm buying everything right now? What do you recommend I should get also? And a lot of times people think all they need is a vinyl cutter, heat press, blank t-shirts and vinyl, but there are small accessories that you will have to pick up. So let's talk about them. All right, first on the list, if you buy a heat press, I highly recommend buying a laser thermometer. This will let you know the exact temperature reading of your heat press. I know that your heat press has a little gauge on there that says this is 235 degrees or this is 350 degrees, but a lot of the times that's not as accurate as something like this. How heat presses work is you set the degrees that you want the press to get to. So if the instructions on your vinyl or your transfer say to apply this correctly, it needs to be applied at 350 degrees. So on your heat press, you type in 350 or you use the arrows and get to 350 and boom, your heat press is turned on and it's starting to get up to 350. Once it reaches 350, it usually beeps and lets you know that it's at the desired temperature. What you have to remember is it doesn't just go to 350 and stop. What it does is it goes past 350 to maybe like, let's say 370, and then it tapers down to 350. So once it reaches 350, beep, 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 it's still heating up and getting hotter, and then it cools down. So everything is 350 on the whole platen. So you have to remember that it gets a little hotter and then it tapers down to its desired temperature. That's how heat presses work. A lot of people hear beep, 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 and they start pressing. And next thing you know, they're pressing whatever transfer or heat transfer vinyl they have and they're pressing it too hot because they didn't let the press cool back down to the desired temperature. So having something like this helps. You hear beep, 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 350. You check the temperature and the temperature is reading 375. Your press isn't broken. What it's doing is it goes hot hotter than expected and then it tapers back down to its temperature. So I never go based off of the readout on my screen. I go based off of what this says right here. You shoot this onto the top heating platen until it says 350. If it doesn't say 350, toggle the temperature until this reads 350 or whatever you need it to be at. A lot of people want to shoot this in the corners and shoot this on the sides and the edges. If your design is not on the edges, the edges temperature make no difference. It means nothing. All you want to make sure is the heating element, wherever the transfer is going to be laying down, is at the right temperature. So shooting this on the corners or on the edge or the back edge, if your transfer doesn't go that far, then your press doesn't need to be at the accurate temperature of that. For whatever reason, people think this whole thing needs to be at 350 edge to edge, corner to corner. No. I don't even care about the corners because nothing I press is on the corners, so I don't even bother shooting this on the corners. I shoot this directly in the center or I shoot it wherever the transfer is going to be laying down. That's all that matters to myself. Hopefully this clears some stuff up for you guys. So get yourself one of these. Everything I show you will be linked somewhere in the description box or maybe it's in the Amazon link or whatever. I'll find you guys some stuff. If you didn't want to use my links, just look up laser thermometer or infrared thermometer. I forget what these things are called. I call them laser thermometers look them up on amazon home depot lowe's harbor freight has them pick one of these up very cheap next thing it's not a need but it's also a nice to have safety ruler you guys see this in a lot of my videos every time i cut vinyl you guys see me using this this is made so you hold it down here and then you use your blade on this side and this little rail right here keeps your fingers from getting chopped off as most of you guys know just a standard little ruler if you're holding the vinyl down and holding the ruler down chances are you have a good chance of slicing your finger when you're using your blade regular ruler safety ruler safety ruler has this little ledge has this little lip right here so you don't cut your finger that's why it's called a safety ruler is this a need 
not really but it's a nice to have because you don't want to cut your finger it depends on how much vinyl you're cutting this one right here is 24 inches a two foot ruler you could get a smaller one if you wanted to 18 inches but there's some times that i cut 20 inch vinyl so it's nice to have a ruler that could actually handle the full length of a 20 inch roll if you're just cutting 12 inch and 15 inch rolls 18 inch ruler would work perfect this right here is a two foot ruler 24 inch ruler and it's a safety ruler like i said your hand goes on this side blade goes on this side slice it down save your fingers once again check the amazon link down below or you could check any of the other links i have if you wanted to pick some of this stuff up now speaking of vinyl if you're doing vinyl you're gonna need tools to weed up the vinyl these ones right here are made by cricut you guys see me use this this one's made by cricut all it is is kind of a little dental hook or dental pick to weed up vinyl these are some tweezers from cricut also these this right here came in a pack with like, I don't know, six or eight different tools. And then these are the two that I use the most. This little straight tweezer and this little bent hook. This one right here is a really cheap one that you could find anywhere. It's like a dental pick also. You can find these on Amazon for like a buck. Really, really cheap. They do the job also. Has a little hook on there. Very lightweight. But this one has like a lot of flex in it. You see what I mean? So after a while, it starts to get bent up depending on how much weeding you do. This one right here, no flex whatsoever. This one is a really thick hook. This is a really thin hook. This pack right here, I bought at like Hobby Lobby or Michaels on sale, pretty cheap. But it came with tweezers. It came with some bent tweezers. It came with this hook, a straight hook, some other stuff. But these are the only two that I use in the pack. So get yourself some tweezers. Get yourself a little weeding tool or a little weeding hook or pick, whatever you want to call it. These are two different options right here for you. Speaking about vinyl and ruler, safety rulers and things to weed out the vinyl, you're going to need an X-Acto knife, craft blade, whatever you want to call it, box cutter. This one right here, fairly cheap. The reason I like this one is because as it gets dull, you just break it off and then you use the straight side lock it in then it does move slice lightweight but like i said it comes with refillable blades fairly cheap you could buy this on amazon also come in different sizes once again it's like a box cutter regular little standard cut knife get you a good one a lot of people use exacto knives which is cool i use that nothing crazy fairly cheap now next thing you want to do is get yourself a bunch of different size mouse pads this mouse pad was a lot bigger and the reason I use these is because sometimes you have to raise stuff up on your heat press. This is something really good to have. You can cut it to different shapes, especially if you're doing like neck labels and you're pressing them in and you don't have a hat press. You could get a mouse pad, you could cut maybe a little two inch square, whatever size of your neck label is. Cut that size square out, place it in the back of the shirt press down with your regular flat heat press. If you ever searched up on YouTube, Big Brando custom neck labels. I have tutorials on how I use the mouse pad to press in custom neck labels. Outside of that, you could get a longer mouse pad and use it for sleeve hits to go over the seam on t-shirts, pant legs, hoodie sleeves, long sleeve t-shirts. If you wanna raise things up over the seam, you gotta use something like a mouse pad or a Teflon pillow. Teflon pillows are cool. These mouse pads are cool because you could cut them to the desired size. You just buy different sizes, cut them down as you need. Heat Press Nation sells a whole pack of like long ones, big ones, flat ones. It's good for baby onesies when you have to raise things up over the buttons. I cut these to the size of the baby onesie, slide it in, boom, press down onto the baby onesies. Easy call. So if you have a 15 by 15 press and you need to press things that are smaller or things that have seams, Mouse pads will be your best friend. Now, speaking of vinyl, heat pressing, and all that good stuff, this next thing is a lifesaver for a lot of people, and it is VLR, Vinyl Letter Remover. This could be bought on Heat Press Nation. I think they sell it on Amazon also. Almost every company online that sells heat presses or sells vinyl also sells this. This right here will remove the vinyl from a t-shirt that's been pressed on. I don't make too many mistakes, but I do make mistakes. 
and if I press something on crooked or if I forget to weed something up and I press it down and I need to remove it to save the t-shirt, spray a little bit of that VLR on the top or the back of the shirt. It'll start to bubble and wrinkle up and then all you do is just peel it away and then it comes off, let it dry and then you can press something else on there. So just because you press vinyl onto the t-shirt and you do it crooked or something happens, it's not the end of the world. If you have something like VLR, you can remove the vinyl from the t-shirt, let it dry while you cut the next design out, then press it right back onto the t-shirt once the t-shirt's dry. Very cool thing to have, very cool thing to use. Like I said, I don't use it all the time. I've had this same can for the last, I don't know, five years or something like that. In my older videos, you could see the shelf behind me and the VLRs in the back of the shelf. This is the same exact can. I don't make a lot of mistakes, but I do make mistakes and it does save me from time to time. You don't need a lot. You just spray a little bit. It just like drips out the nozzle, a little bit onto the vinyl, a little bit on the back of the vinyl you'll see it bubble and wrinkle peel it off now I've only used it on regular heat transfer vinyl I haven't tried it on any puff vinyls and I have not tried it on like plastisol transfers or screen printed transfers or DTF transfer haven't tried it on any of that only tried it with standard heat transfer vinyl and it also works on hats like when you do foam truckers or if you're doing some kind of hat with heat transfer vinyl on it whether it's a cotton poly front or whatever if you press vinyl on it you can squirt a little bit of that on there take it off repress it on again now let's say that you don't even use heat transfer vinyl you don't even have a vinyl cutter all you bought was a heat press and you're planning on using plastisol transfers DTF transfers screen printed transfers some sort of transfers something that I wouldn't cheap out on is scissors you want good comfortable scissors the reason being if you have a gang sheet and you need to cut out all of this stuff if you're using some cheap little scissors that aren't comfortable to the touch and you have 50 or 100 transfers that you have to cut out, your hand is gonna get tired. So you wanna get some scissors that are very comfortable that you could use and that are sharp. Do not cheap out on the scissors. Get something that's very comfortable. A lot of these craft stores have scissors with the bottoms open so you can put your finger in there and see what they feel like before you buy them. Buy some comfortable scissors that are sharp so you could cut out all your transfers. So with these super color transfers right here, this is a gang sheet and I would need to cut this out. I would need to cut this little B out, this one, this one, this hit, this hit. I would have to be able to cut these out. This job right here was hundreds of t-shirts. So if I'm cutting out hundreds of transfers, I want to make sure I got some scissors that are not going to fatigue my hand. Hopefully this video helps somebody out out there and clears a lot of things up for people that are just getting into this business. And these are just some of the tools and accessories that you might need. It'll help you get along a little bit better and make your life a little bit easier. All right. If you got any questions, make sure you leave it in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, Big Brando TV. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Yeah.